Savior, King of kings and Lord of lords, Jesus Christ. We thank you that you've given him the name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to, God, is, is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We thank you for our redemption through his precious blood as we are approaching Resurrection Sunday. We can declare boldly without any doubt or reservation that he is alive and he is alive forevermore. We thank you that he died to wash away, not just cover or hide our sins, but wash them away and make us new creations in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So it's this that we pray. And Father, we thank you for your word. We believe we'll receive this evening, not because of I'm speaking, but because it's your word. Open up our hearts. Open up our minds. Father, we, we just declare, myself included, that I just refuse to leave here the same that I came in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Well, if you've got a Bible or if, if uh, they probably got it up on the screen here, turn with me to Hebrews chapter 12 or just follow along up there behind me. Hebrews chapter 12. And, it, and, and as you're going there, I just want to say once again, you know, uh, I know there's some probably new faces here this evening, but um, those of you that I've seen before and those of you that I'll see here tonight for the first time, it is a privilege and an honor for me to be here. I thank God for what he's doing here. Amen. Amen. And uh, just, just hallelujah. hallelujah. He is the freedom giver. Yes. No matter what's tried to bind us, God frees us through Christ Jesus. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 <clears throat> says this, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Tonight, I'm entitling this, this message, that we're to run and complete, and to complete the race that God has set before us. Amen. There's a race that is to be won, and not only want, run, but it is to be won through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. But I, I want to I turn over to the Amplified, and, and uh, someone said this is the, the, the female version of the Bible because it's Amplified, it's a little bit louder. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I can say that bravely here, bravely here tonight because my wife's not here, so... <laughs> Therefore then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who have borne testimony to the truth, let us strip off and throw aside every cumbrance and unnecessary weight. And that sin which so readily, deftly, and cleverly clings to and entangles us, and let us run with patient endurance and steady and active persistence the appointed course of the race that is set before us. Say the appointed course. Say, God has an appointed course for me. And the Holy Spirit and the Word of God will help me stay on that course. We're all in a race. We're all in a race, but you know what? There's, when you run track, you know, my, my three of my boys ran track, and... Um, you go to a track meet around, you know, it's around the football field, and there's lines on that track. And those are called lanes. <laughs> and they're specific lanes for a specific runner. And the runners in that race have to be very careful to stay in their lane because if they get off into somebody else's lane, they're disqualified. So we've got a specific course that God has set before us. We're all in a race. We're all on the same track. We're at the same track meet. <laughs> but we got a lane that we're to run specifically. 
Now, we'll, we'll come back to that later, but now turn with me to 1 uh, <coughs> Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians 12. <coughs> Amen. I got some help over here. I need help. We all need help. Thank you, brother. <laughs> I tell our congregation, if, if you're worried about or, or, or bothered by small voices, uh, grow up. Grow up and become like a child who's just, there's no inhibitions. Amen. Matter of fact, if we're not hearing those voices, there, 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 there's something we're not doing properly. Right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And I mean that with all my heart. We, you know what? We can't get religious. Meaning this, you know, uh, religion is, is and, and uh, you know, when I say religion, I'm not talking about our following of Christ, but I mean, uh, the religious religious is just man's idea of how they think God should do stuff. <laughs> and if we're not careful, we'll, we'll, we'll get stiff. We'll get, we'll get stone cold in our hearts. No, we have a freedom in Christ. It's a relationship, not a religion that we have with him. Amen. Amen. That, that side, side trip there. Yeah, little guy tripped me up here, but I like tripp getting tripped up by little guys. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 12, it said, For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have been, been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. The body is not one member, but many. Well, there's many in this room, but we're one body <laughs> with many different parts, just like our natural human body. And, and, and so we'll get back to that too. But we must run the race that is set before us, the appointed course. The appointed course. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Uh, we are all on the same track, like I said before, but we're in a different lane. Our, our race doesn't look exactly alike. Sometimes on that same track, in those same lanes, they put up what they call hurdles. Have anybody heard of a hurdle? <laughs> well, in a hurdle, you've got to still stay in the lane, even though the race, it looks different. But the rules are basically the same. You can't crawl under the hurdles either. You've got to go over them. It's an obstacle. And how, how many of you know that there's some hurdles in our lives once in a while? Absolutely. But thank God for the Holy Spirit who enables us to jump, jump over them. Hallelujah. Not hide from them or get to a hurdle. You know, I, I've never been to a track meet from, you know, in play day to high school track and never seen the Olympics where, where someone, you know, world class, class hurdler starts the race, he gets to the first hurdle and he, oh, oh, oh. Right? No, those hurdles are meant to jump over. And that's all issues are in our life. That's all problems are in our life. They're hurdles for us to jump over with the help of the Holy Spirit. Don't be intimidated by hurdles. I mean, could you imagine being children of Israel? You know, you're following this guy through the wilderness. Don't know where you're going. <laughs> You've been released from Egypt. You're walking through the wilderness and you come to a big hurdle called the Red Sea. Whew. Not only were you up, come to this hurdle, but the army of the nation that you just left is bearing down on you. And all, the, all your leader has is a stick. <laughs> but he also has a relationship with God and did what God told him to do through all the issues in Egypt. And God told him to raise up that staff. 
when he did that, the sea split. What did they do? They went through. They, they didn't just stand there and say, wow, this is cool. <laughs> look at this. Look at this. No, they're, they're, their enemy's still bearing down on them. So what did they do? They, they, they kicked, you know what, to get out of the, the midst of that sea. And they're getting closer and closer and closer, and they can hear the army's coming. But they finally got to the, la the last person, got out of the water, and what did it do? The water's just woof. That's pretty cool stuff. God will open up avenues for us, but he cannot make us run. You've got to do something. You've got to do something. Praise God. And, and, you know, the Bible says that we're not to just hear the word, but we're to be doers of the word. Not hearers only. Now listen to this. Deceiving our own selves. I said this a couple months ago here, but you know what? We've been giving the devil way too much cred by blaming him for so many things that he's not doing. It's just that we're not doing what we're supposed to do. It's not the devil. It's, I wish... I had him as my teacher in high school. He's not only did he give you the question, but he gave you the answer. Therefore, choose life. <laughs> I had an algebra teacher like that. I mean, I'd go up there and he'd, hey, I have a, he'd work out all my algebra problems and I'd pass the test. I don't know nothing about algebra today. <laughs> but thank God, he's given us the answer. But we have to walk in the truth of it. You know, I mean, he's provided salvation for every living human being on planet Earth. But it's our choice to receive or reject it. People say, well, you know what? If God's so loving, why does he send people to hell? He hasn't sent one, people to hell, one person to hell. They've chose not to receive Jesus, and they've chose the path of death and not life. That's why people have such an issue with God is they're, they're putting on to him fault for them not believing his truth. It's going to get better. You run your lane, I run my lane. Our race is not against one another. Our race is a race of obedience. We are not in the race to compare. We're not in this race to compete against one another. And we're, we're in this race to complete one another. Not to compete, but complete one another. We're not in this race against, we're in this race with. You know, I pastor church here in the community. Pastor Brent pastors this church. We're not in competition. We're here to complete the work of God, aren't we? And when I hear something going good on, over here or any other church in the community, I, I, I get up in front of our congregation and we rejoice. Because we're, we're, we're not, we're not competing. We've got to quit competing against one another. We're all of one body. We're different parts of the body, but we're still one body. I mean, I, I'm, I'm so thankful that in my natural human body that, that there are parts that aren't rebelling against one another. <laughs> you know? Oh. <laughs> you know, they, they, they all have a, their own function in their own lane. I mean, I, I, I'm, you know, my... I, my index finger is a big help to my body. <laughs> it's even got a play. It's got a part to play. It's got a purpose. And don't look at me like you've never picked your nose before. <laughs> I remember the 1996 Olympics. They were at Atlanta, Georgia. 
world-class runner Michael Johnson for the United States, USA, USA. He ran the Olympics that year, and he, he, he got two gold. And um, set, one of them was a world, rec world record. And I remember watching him. When he was running his race and coming to the finish line, he didn't look at anybody that was running in that race. He looked up to the, the jumbotron and just saw if he beat himself from before. And he, he, he beat his own record. Oh, wow. He wasn't running against <laughs> everybody else. He was running against to be his best. He was on another level. Another level. And, and it was interesting because that, that year he, he got two, two uh, gold medals, and that's back when uh, Jay Leno was the host of The Tonight Show. You know, back when, you know, late night TV was kind of funny, where it's not funny at all anymore. But anyway, he was on there, and, and Jay, you know, for those of you that remember, those of you that have never heard of this, Nike built, made him a, a track shoe that was gold. Because that's what, that what he said. He said, I'm running for the gold, so I'm going to have gold spikes. Man of faith, man. <laughs> you know, and, and, and uh, so he's talking to Jay Leno, and Jay Leno, you know, he, he was saying, you know, hey, you know what, when, when parents have a, the, the kids, you know, when they grow out of their first shoes, they, they, they bronze them. He said, uh, are you going to bronze those shoes that you wore at the Olympics? And he looked at Jay, and he goes, why in the world would you bronze gold shoes? <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, God's given us gold shoes to run the race that we're in. Right. Don't, don't, don't hold back or don't finish the race and just bronze the shoes you're wearing. We're going for the gold. Jesus' blood is worth us going for the gold with. No matter what we've done, no matter how big we've failed, we're still in the race. Until we draw our last breath, we can get up and get going again. Amen. I mean, failure, you know what that is? It's called breathing. <laughs> it happens when you breathe. But the reality is, true failure is not just making mistakes. True failure is quitting. When you quit. That's what true failure is. So if you've, if you've tripped over a bump in the road or wiped out over a hurdle, don't make such a big issue out of it. Make a bigger issue out of the grace of God in your life. Make more, more out of what Jesus has done in your life. Make more out of thank God for the relationships that we have, that we can encourage one another and cheer one another on. You know, when, when we go to track meets for our boys, you know, I mean, when, when, when they were running or doing whatever their event was, those that weren't doing an event were at track side cheering on their teammates. That's what this is all about. We're cheering one another on. Get up and go. go for it. Get up and go. <laughs> Don't stop. Don't quit. Right. God's got a plan. Right. God's got a purpose. And his gifts and callings are without repentance. He's not sorry that he's put you in the race he put you in. Get up and go for it. Kick, kick life in the butt and let, instead of letting it kick you in the butt. Ephesians chapter 4. Now, I, don't, uh, I wrote these down. The, the same guy, J Michael jo Johnson, ultimately he won four Olympic golds because he ran in the next gold in Sydney, Australia, uh, the next Olympics in Sydney, Australia, eight World Cups, and four Goodwill Games. In two Olympics, eight World Cups, and four World Cups, Goodwill games, he's 16 and 0. 16 golds in 16 runs.
we're in the spiritual Olympics. You and I are in the spiritual Olympics. Let's run the race to win. Ephesians chapter 4. Starting with verse 11. It said, and he himself, that's Jesus, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. You know, and oftentimes, too many in the body of Christ make such a big deal out of those that stand behind the pulpit. But we're, we're just here to help equip. That's our lane. That's, that's pastor, and my lane is just equip the saints. But here, here, here's our purpose. For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Everyone in this room has been called to the work of the ministry. And that may look different for you than it does for me. It looks different for me than it does for Pastor Brent. Equipping the same for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. What's your goal? My goal is fullness of Christ. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Praise God. Verse 16, it says this in the Amplified, and I don't know if I gave you this reference, guys. If I didn't, forgive me, but for because of him, the whole body the church in all its various parts, closely joined and firmly knit together by the joints and ligaments which is supplied when each part with power adapted to its need. Say, I've got power. Say it. I've got power adapted to my need to run my race, to finish my course with joy in victory, in Jesus' name. Whoo! You almost want to find a phone booth, phone booth to get a cape on after you say that. That feels good. I mean, the word of God, man. <laughs> Talk about motivation. Speak it, man. There's no, mo no more motivating power than the word of God. Amen. You're not going to find it in the world. You're not going to find it in some silly slogan. You find it in the word. Glory to God. God has called you. Now listen to this. We're in our own lane, but we're, we're in one race together, but you're in your own lane. Please listen to this very, very carefully. God has called you to be you. Don't be ashamed of that. God has called me to be me. You are a lot better. You're a lot better you than I am. And I'm a lot better me than you are. <laughs> you have strengths I don't have. I have strengths that you don't have. So guess what we need to do? Get together and draw off of each other's strengths. Draw off of each other's strengths. Remember, we're not in to compete, we're to complete one another. If I fall, I need you to help pick me up. When you fall, I need to help pick you up. Without any criticism or judgment. Well, our attitude should always be, but for the grace of God, that's where I go. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Stay in your lane and don't compare. Don't trap yourself either in thinking like this. If only I could be who they are. If only I could have what they have. 
You know, I, I've had all kinds of silly thinking throughout my life. You know, I've had my eye on a particular vehicle or something and think, you know what, man, if I could get that car, my life would be changed forever. <laughs> or a Harley Idol. I saw ya. I saw ya. I saw him. <laughs> you know, they can bring us joy, but it, it, it can't keep us full. Now, if you're riding on your Harley and you're praising God and thanking God and, and enjoying, you know, what only he can do with the days we've had just recently. <laughs> you know, this is a day that the Lord has made. We rejoice and be glad in it. You know what? I, I'm a snowmobiler, so I love to snowmobile, and I love to praise God while I'm doing it. Amen. I do. I'll get on my snowmobile in the morning. I say, this is the day that you've given me, Lord. I rejoice, and I'm glad in it. And, and, and you know what? I'm okay with this year not having any snow. You know? But wait till next year. <laughs> Hallelujah, it's coming. <laughs> <clears throat> if, I, if only I could live where they live. If, o if only, if only, if only. You know, if only I could be married to that woman or if I could only be married to that guy. <laughs> you don't know them. Maybe they're... Surface is not always what it really is. <laughs> don't, don't live if, in the if-only world. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, man. You are a better you than you would be them. It is a trap. It's a comparison trap. God wants and God needs you to be you, to be, the, to be what he's equipped and empowered you to be. I think, I think it'd be good just right now to proclaim again. Is it okay if we proclaim? Absolutely. Say, thank you, Father God, thank for, you, Father God. Loving me for loving me for who I am. I thank you for equipping me for the race, for the assignment for the ministry that, you, that you've assigned me to. Help me, Holy Spirit, to be a better me and not try to be someone else. Even when I fall, you'll pick me up and you'll re-equip me, restart me, refire me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory to God. But God wants and he needs you to be you, to be who he has called and equipped you to be, where he wants you to be, doing what he's called you to do. You are the best you when you're obedient to him. Thank God for where he's placed you. I thank God all the time. I say, thank you, Father. You know, I grew up in Wilmer. I graduated in 1981, Wilmer High School. You know, we moved away, just my wife, my family moved away uh, shortly after we graduated to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and then we lived in Branson, Missouri for a while, and, and uh, 19 years, God called us back. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm pastoring the church today that my father-in-law started and the church that I came to the Lord in. And, and I, I'm doing two things today that I said I would never do. Move back to Wilmer. <laughs> I've been here, done this, and I failed miserably when I did it as a teenager. <laughs> I, I was, I was, I'll just say it this way. My friends had to not tell their parents who they were hanging out with that night. What's interesting, after I got saved, parents changed their tune. They wanted me to be with their, my buddies because they knew that at least they'd have one sober driver. <laughs> and I'd never pastor a church. So I traveled in ministry all over the world for my father-in-law's ministry and, and, and you know, taught in different churches around the United States, been to a few places around the world, and, and I loved doing it. You know, but when the, when the grace left for that, man, I, I, I complain if I got to go to Candy, Ohio now. It seems like so far. 
<laughs> but I thank God, not every day, but often. Thank you, Lord, for sending me back to wonderful Wilmer, Minnesota. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to pastor the wonderful people that I'm honored that they would call me pastor. I thank God for my lane. You know, on Facebook one time, somebody put, a friend of mine put on, if there's any place in the world that you would want to live in, where would it be? And I said, wonderful Wilmer, Minnesota. <laughs> and I mean it with all my heart. I mean, I can go to other places, you know, and, and stuff, and, but if, if you can't find it in Wilmer, you really don't need it. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Yeah, and sometimes there's too many things to find in Wilmer. <laughs> and you don't need them either. Or thank God for him getting you to where he wants you to be. And, and if you're kind of fumbling around right now, don't sweat it. Just thank God. I said, thank you, Lord, that your hand is upon me. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading and guiding me. Help me find the lane of the course that, that, that God put me on, that God's desire, that I will fulfill his plan for my life. Jeremiah 29, 11 uh, it, it, it's a pretty familiar portion of Scripture for, for some people, but uh, it, it's so awesome. It says, for I know the thoughts, and I didn't give this to you guys. This was a last-minute thing. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. <clears throat> the Amplified said, for I know the thoughts and plans. Say, thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans of, of well-being and peace and not for evil to give you a hope in your final outcome. The other day, we're talking about not comparing, not competing. I, I just read this just the other day. It said, don't compare your life to others. There's no comparison between the sun and the moon. They both shine when it's their time. They both shine when it's their time. You will shine being you. And I'll shine being me. Amen. Amen. And you know what? We need to thank God for one another too. I thank God for the gifts. I mean, we've got four boys, and, and they're different. You know, they've got different likes. They've got different talents. They've got different interests. And, and that's what's cool about being a dad of four boys. I mean, they, 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 they look like brothers. You know, sometimes they, they act almost exactly the same, but most of the time they don't. Sometimes they act like me, and that's when my wife prays really hard. But I'm so glad they're not robots. Amen. I'm glad they are who they are. Right. Three, of, three, of, three of them are married, and, and between the three of them, we have eight grandchildren. And those eight grandchildren, the beauty of each of them is, every morning when I pray, I pray for my, my grandchildren specifically. And I, I you know, there's just some little thing about them that kind of pops into my mind. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Jules is a, he's, a, he's an engineer. I mean, he can, he can put, he's, well, he's seven now, but when he was three, he put together the biggest Lego set you could ever put together, you know, that was in the store where they live, and he did it by himself. He's my engineer. His twin sister, Lily, is my, my princess. <laughs> and, and I found out yesterday she's in a, uh, a pageant this next week uh, for, to be some mini prin princess in the, in the community. <laughs> you know, just go down the aisle. The beauty, of him, the beauty of being a grandfather, the beauty of being a father, the beauty of being a part of the body of Christ is our differences. Amen. We're to complement one another. Bring our strengths. Pastor Brent gives me his strength. I give him my strength. 
Amen. Be there for one another, cheering one another on. If you're not in the heat of the race, get around the track and start cheering them on. Amen. 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 Father, wow, we're so grateful. We are so grateful for all that you do in our lives. Father, I pray for each person here tonight. Lord, that if there's anybody that has been struggling, and, and I've struggled before, and, 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 so, and not too long ago about some things, and Father, I thank you that your peace was there. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding guarded my, my heart and guarded my mind. So I pray your peace over each of these wonderful people that are here. Lord, may they never say from this evening forward that they don't have a purpose or they don't know that you've got a plan for them. But Father, I, I pray that the Spirit of God would rise up and explode on the inside of them and show them their spiritual and word-filled and led potential and your love and your commitment to them. Jesus said that he wouldn't leave his disciples comfortless, but that the Father would send a comforter, a helper, uh, uh, someone to stand by us. Help us never to remind re Never to forget that, Father, but always remind us of the Holy Spirit's help for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Come on, guys, let's give Rod some appreciation. Thank you, brother. Yeah, bud. All right. Um, so, yeah, that will be it for tonight. Next week, Jason Shorn will be back. All so right. that's going to be awesome. awesome. Jason's always great to have here. Um, he's, he is a, a new acquisition to the, the Fortress lineup, which has been really, really good. So be praying about that. And uh, so let, let's just pray real quick, and then we'll head home. Father, again, thank you. I thank you for Pastor Rod. I thank you for the gifts that you have given him, the ability to articulate your word, to relate uh, to us in such a personal way. We pray your blessings over him, Lord, that you would fill him up as he had poured himself out for us. Lord, and we give you thanks and praise for him. Lord, be with us tonight as we have received your word. Let it take root in our heart to challenge us and to cause us to grow more and more in you. We thank you, Lord. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.